If we can meet them in free and fair debating ground, they will lose. Because what they are suggesting, that there were these massive exterminations, is uh, a, a tissue of fabrication. And I realized that our biggest task was to cut these sanctimonious frauds that run around flashing their concentration camp numbers for all and sundry, which they maybe got for a, a tattoo, a, in a tattoo parlor for a package of lucky strikes, which you could get in Europe after the Second World War, and which do arrive in almost mystical place in history. And I knew that during that particular trial, we had to take these people down a peg or two. When Hitler came to power in 1933, he wanted to destroy all the Jews in Europe. That required the resources of a computer. But in 1933, there was no computer. What there was, was the Hollerith punch card. This was a card about the size of a dollar bill, which uh, was invented by a German-American, Hermann Hollerith, and it stored information. And these could then be cross-tabulated and read by a special machine. The technology that Hermann Hollerith invented was put into his own private company, which then was joined with other companies to create a company that ultimately became known as International Business Machines, IBM. Thomas J. Watson was the chairman and CEO of IBM. IBM sought out the Nazi regime as soon as Hitler came to power. As far as Thomas Watson was concerned, Adolf Hitler was his number one foreign customer and his number two global customer just behind the Social Security Administration. And so they said to Hitler, what would you like to happen? And Hitler said, I want to know where all the Jews are in Germany. Consequently, IBM invented the racial census. It was uh, a process by which thousands of people were hired by Watson and IBM, put into a giant warehouse. People went door to door. They um, uh, filled out census forms. And all this information was punched into these punch cards. And it was organized so that in one column, it would be your name. In the next column, it would be your religion. The next column would be your profession and your residence. At the rate of 64,000 cards per hour, Hitler immediately discovered where all the Jews of Polish extraction in Berlin engaged in the fur trade were living and doing business. Once that was done, they would compare all those names against the bank records. They then start to seize and confiscate and pauperize the, uh, the assets of the Jews. How is that done? All the banks and financial institutions are running on IBM punch cards. These cards were like bullets. If IBM would have just stopped printing the cards, it would have been like rifles without bullets, but they wouldn't stop printing the cards. In fact, the Auschwitz tattoo began as an IBM number. It began when the prisoner card that each person had, which was identical to what the IBM system could take, was actually tattooed on their skin. And so, the actual extermination of the Jews. What they said was, it's no good to just run these Jews into the gas chambers. We need to work them to death then we'll send them to the gas chamber. IBM, responding to this request, developed a special program by which all the skills were put into one set of cards. Is it a doctor? Is it a uh, construction worker? Is it a mechanic? And they would cross-tabulate that against where all the slave labor was needed. 
IBM designed it like that, and it was, in fact, a technology of death. It isn't that they handed this information off and just left. It wasn't like a telephone that they would just sell. They were on site. Now, it's not possible for Thomas Watson to say, well, gee, we just didn't know. Because, in fact, just days after Hitler came to power in 1933, Americans streamed into Madison Square Garden protesting that Hitler was going to destroy the Jews and that Hitler would soon be subject to a boycott. That boycott was launched. Whether you were selling uh, German uh, uh, toys, German pharmaceuticals, German wares of any type, it was all under a huge boycott. Unfortunately, the technology that IBM gave was so misunderstood in the day People didn't really understand that IBM had this incredible um, operational, economic, and planning alliance with the Third Reich.